the heart of any democracy is the parliament. Members of parliament ensure that everybody's views are expressed. By electing MPs by universal suffrage to represent us, we can all make our voice heard. Today, Belgium has a federal institutional structure, where the decision-making power is shared between the state, three regions and three communities. The regions and the communities of the country enjoy a large degree of autonomy. Each of them can, within the scope of their remit, shape their own future and determine their own development strategies. The Brussels capital region is a bilingual region that covers 19 communes of the administrative district of Brussels. This represents approximately 161 square kilometres for nearly 1.2 million inhabitants. Brussels is a city region. It is very much a plural city and it's organised around its own institutions. The parliament is a nerve centre of these institutions. Le Parlement bruxellois, c'est une institution qui est très en prise avec le, le réel. Pourquoi Parce que ce sont des gens qui vivent dans une même ville, une grande ville, enfin à l'échelle du pays certainement, et donc qui ont peut-être plus d'échanges sur des choses concrètes euh, qu'auront euh, par exemple comme échange quelqu'un qui habite au Stade avec quelqu'un qui habite à Arlon au Parlement euh, fédéral. Ici on parle de choses très concrètes. Ja, in Brussel heb je 19 gemeenten, meer dan 1 miljoen onderduizend inwoners van allerlei nationaliteit, religie, woning speelt geen rol. Je hebt allochtonen, autochtonen, dat speelt voor ons geen rol. Wat het belangrijkste voor ons, we zijn gekozen door de burger. Jullie hebben ons gekozen om eigenlijk uw belang te verdedigen, om te voorzien dat alles goed draait in Brussel. En tegelijkertijd een goede relatie met de andere parlements. Dat betekent het laatste parlement, het federale parlement. Maar voor ons het belangrijkste, dat is jullie hebben het laatste woord. Daarom bestaat de democratie. Democratie betekent dat we u kiezen, mensen die jullie u vertegenwoordigen. Daarom zijn we hier vandaag. Ik ben misschien eerst onder voorter, maar ik ben ook eigenlijk een parlementslid zoals de anderen. What role does the Brussels Regional Parliament actually play on a day-to-day -day basis? What are the actual duties of the members of its parliament, also known as deputies? This is a little more complicated. Even if on a basic level we know that the parliament is responsible for legislature, therefore it drafts the laws that are voted on and then transferred to government, which is the executive branch, things, as you might expect, are a little more complex in reality. So let's take a closer look. Like all parliaments, the Brussels Regional Parliament is made up of members elected by universal suffrage, the Brussels deputies. There are 89 deputies in total, 37 women and 52 men. The 89 members are divided into two language groups. 72 belong to the French-speaking group and 17 members belong to the Dutch-speaking group. The regional elections are held once every five years. Since the last elections on the 25th of May 2014, the parliamentary majority is made up of the following political groups. PS, DFI, CDH, Open VLD, SPA and the CDNV. And the opposition consists of the following political parties. MR, Ecolo, Groen. NVA, PTB, Vlaams Belang and one independent deputy. The current president is Charles Piquet. His role is to lead the work of the parliament and to represent the assembly. The first vice president of the parliament is Fouad Aïdar. The president and the first vice president always have to belong to different language groups. The different matters that the Parliament deals with can easily be seen all around us. You only have to look at the wide scope of powers of the Parliament to realise this. Spatial planning, urban planning, housing, employment, public works, mobility, environment and nature conservation, waste management, tourism, energy policy, funding and guardianship of the 19 communes, road safety, animal welfare, scientific research and international relations on a regional level. We will come back to the powers of the Parliament a little later. Before that, let us look at how the Brussels Regional Parliament works. The Brussels Parliament has three main duties. The first is to draft regional laws. 
which in the Brussels region are known as ordinances. This is done either by filing and voting on a private member's ordinance proposal or by examining and voting on an ordinance bill from the government. The second duty is to control the government, i.e. its ministers, by way of questions asked during plenary sessions or at committee level. Its third duty is to approve the budgets. The work of the Parliament is primarily carried out in the various parliamentary committees. There are seven permanent committees within the Parliament's assembly. Each of these committees is responsible for one or more areas. Ordinance bills or proposals are examined by the relevant committee. The committees hear, as appropriate, the members of the government or the deputy who initiated a proposal or anyone they might consider useful to consult, for example an expert in the subject area concerned. The committee first appoints a rapporteur to report on proceedings at the plenary assembly, i.e. before the whole parliament, all 89 members. The report summarizes the discussions held at committee level. Each member of the Brussels Regional Parliament has the right to submit amendments, i.e. to make a proposal to modify a bill. In a plenary session, the deputies debate and vote to determine whether these proposals or bills should become new ordinances. These ordinances are then published in the Belgian official journal, called the Moniteur Belge. Once they have been published in the Moniteur Belge and have entered into force, the ordinances can be viewed online. The Parliament may also adopt resolutions expressing its point of view on a particular political issue to the government or other authorities. But the work of the deputies does not stop at ensuring an active presence in the Assembly. Deputies are also very active outside Parliament, on the ground. First, thanks to various meetings and contact opportunities, the deputies are directly engaged with citizens in order to better understand the issues and expectations of Brussels inhabitants. These meetings with citizens are also a basis for their work in the committees and sessions in the Assembly. Deputies are also in regular contact with the media, they answer the questions of journalists. This ensures there is a democratic transparency and allows citizens to see the work of Parliament. The presence of the Parliament on social networks, as well as its website, also help to promote transparency. We all have the chance to directly put our own questions to members, for example by email or on social networks. Le Parlement, ce n'est pas non plus une forteresse euh, repliée sur elle-même, euh, fréquentée uniquement par des, des politiques. Euh, C'est aussi un lieu où il se passe plein de choses ici. Euh, ce sont des, des, des réunions, ce sont des réunions ouvertes au public, je veux dire. C'est des, des colloques, c'est aussi des expositions parfois. Et euh, je crois que c'est très important de désacraliser un peu les lieux de la démocratie. C'est-à-dire que de faire en sorte que les gens puissent y venir à la fête de l'Iris, ils peuvent visiter le bâtiment, mais aussi ils peuvent venir aux séances plénières, ils peuvent venir entendre les débats en commission et euh, ils peuvent surtout venir à l'ensemble des activités qui sont organisées dans le Parlement. Donc, moi j'ai envie de dire parfois la population doit s'approprier les lieux où la démocratie vit et pas être impressionné parce qu'il y a une belle façade, des grandes salles. Euh, euh, non, c'est un lieu qu'il faut pouvoir populariser. Eigenlijk, uh, we zijn verkozen eigenlijk door de burger. Elke parlement is gekozen door de burger en de burger wil of heeft een paar verwachtingen. De verwachting dat betekent eigenlijk om hem gelukkig te maken. En dat is de bedoeling van elke parlementslid. We zijn 89 parlementsleden. Jullie uh, willen het eigenlijk dat uh, ze Nederlandstalig en Franstalig, maar op het einde komen we alle samen op één parlement. En deze parlement moet de burger eigenlijk vertegenwoordigen. Dat is de enige reden dat we bestaan. Mensen gelukkig maken. Before looking at a few concrete examples of the Parliament's powers and areas of intervention, let us briefly review its history. It is interesting to see how the Parliament has developed and changed throughout history up to the present day. Belgium began a fundamental reform of its institutions during the Constitutional Review of 1970. 
This established three cultural communities, the French, Dutch and German cultural communities. Each community had its own council, its own parliament and could adopt decrees with the same value as the law. Their exclusive areas of power related to cultural matters, the use of languages and matters relating to education. The institutional reform of 1988 saw the adoption of a special law which set up the institutions of the Brussels capital region from 1998 onwards. It was also at this time that the French Community Commission and the Flemish Community Commission were instituted within the Brussels capital region. Since 1993, the first article of the Constitution states that Belgium is a federal state composed of communities and regions. These federated entities are the French community, Flemish community and the German-speaking community, as well as the Rallund region, the Flemish region and the Brussels capital region. On the 31st of January 2014, changes were made to the Constitution. This sixth reform of the state was a result of an institutional agreement entitled A More Efficient Federal State and More Autonomous Entities. These changes mainly involved the transfer of powers from the federal state to the communities and the regions. To name but a few examples, this included family allowances, health care, the Rent Act, the Justice Centres, the European Integration Fund, the Motorway Code and the Immigration Policy Support Fund and new powers of Homeland Security. Generally speaking, all these transfers of power were accompanied with transfers of finance as defined by the Special Finances Act. Now that we better understand the institutional history of Belgium, Let's go back to the powers enjoyed by the region. These not only include powers relating to transport and mobility, employment, notably youth employment, housing, environmental and waste policy, but also powers relating to historic monuments and sites, public works and urban renewal, the regional economy, foreign trade, international relations, tourism, water and energy policies, and scientific research, etc. So there are countless important issues that are examined and debated in Parliament. These are all examples of regional matters for which the Parliament assures the legislature and the control of the government. They show us the extent to which the decisions taken and the ordinances passed within its chamber affect the daily lives of every individual living in the Brussels region. This reflects the will of the Parliament to continue to be a key player in the development of the Brussels capital region. Since 1989, the Joint Community Commission, also known as the COCOM, has been playing a fundamental role in the Brussels capital region. In matters of individual aid and health, it is responsible for more than 300 establishments, services and centres that are not governed exclusively by the French community or the Flemish community. Its powers were extended by the sixth reform of the state. Immediately after elections and after the summer recess, the parliament appoints a president from among its members. A senior first president, three vice presidents and ten secretaries. Together they form the bureau of the assembly. The Bureau makes all the useful decisions to ensure the proper functioning of Parliament. In other words, it's responsible for managing the Parliament. The Bureau, together with presidents of recognised political groups, constitutes what is known as the Extended Bureau. It's the Extended Bureau that prepares the sessions of the Parliament and of the Combined Assembly, and that draws up the agenda. The Brussels Regional Parliament is, of course, its parliamentary activity, its permanent involvement as a link between citizens and the institutions of the Brussels region. 
but it is also, ultimately, a place that is full of history and a subtle mix between the past and the contemporary world. This film will have given you a brief overview of the activities and duties of the Brussels Regional Parliament, but to understand it even better, we invite you to visit it, to attend a plenary session, to put questions to members and to discover it with your own eyes.